Hey, what's going on, YouTube? It's the brain of the mainframe here, Niall Scala, with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Billy Tucci. Teen sensation Bill Tucci is on the mend, buddy. Boy, what a day that I have. What a day. How about you? How, how was your day? Oh, man, meeting after meeting after meeting. But we had that nice little break, that little live session on Facebook, just, uh, you know, talking about the show, all the fun things we have going on, and trying to break that 2K subscription point. Are we getting close to it? Because we're getting slammed we're getting with requests, buddy. I know it's crazy. I was dealing with a few uh, right before the show. I had a couple uh, referrals come over. Um, some really cool projects too. So I mean, I may try to squeeze in a couple more people next week, just because they they have some amazing campaigns. And uh, you know, you know, some of them only have like eleven days left. So it, it's going to be tough. But uh, we'll definitely start uh, doing our whole uh, crowdfunding callout stuff again, uh, starting tomorrow. We'll be getting the crowd for absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Hello. Absolutely. Hello. Hello. So but, is, um, is my audio coming in okay now? Are you coming in okay, Billy? Am I coming yeah, in coming okay, fine. Fire Marshal Bo? <laughs> yes. You're coming in just well, fine. We got a friend. great guest today. Yeah, we got a great guest with a very interesting uh, comic. Uh, actually, it's a, it's a double feature, I believe. Two separate books. I may be wrong. You can correct me. Um, and uh, definitely some cool character designs and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to talking to uh to our guest tonight to our guest mr jim noble it's sir jim noble let's just bring right in where is let's he bring the way up boom he is look at it god love you look at that handsome young man how you doing jim uh, oh, you do? jim where'd you go <laughs> <Did I not? laughs> I, I, I think he hit a button i think he hit a button indeed and they used to call me a boomer I jim know. the boomer Jim the Boomer, what's going on? He jinxed himself. He goes, I've never done a live stream before. And I was like, oh, don't worry. It's pretty easy. Like, what happens if I cut out? I was like, well, just reuse the link I sent you, I well, guess. So I get, uh, uh, uh. Is he coming in? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, let's hope uh, we'll have Jim come back in. Uh, in the meantime, let's uh, let's open up to the chat, friend. Yeah, we're number 90. We have 90. Uh, we're, we're three backers away from 2,000. No. Yes, apparently so. I mean, no. Brett uh, Cantrell said that we're three more till 100. I'm hoping it means three more till, unless he really? means, it's, unless um, Jim is three backers away from 100. If that's what Three he's more till about. 100. Well, Jim's got 117 backers. So Jim is blown past that, the 100, that, that yes, all yes. important 100 backer mark. Yes. Hey, Scala, I got to ask you something. What are I'm you? Married. Uh, what are you doing? What are you doing for Valentine's Day, huh? What am I doing for Valentine's Day? I'll tell you what I'm doing. Hey, Reminding doing? her she's lucky she's married to me. There you go, buddy. To me, you know. To she's me. married to you. She's married to me. Married to you. She's married to me. You're good. She's married she's to you. Married to me. All right. All right. All right. So you no, have no plans for really Valentine's know. Day. I don't know. Not really. The Not mother really. of your children. Loving your character design. I can't wait to back your campaign in the future. Metal Moomix Brewskis. Hell, brother. <laughs> Hell. Right there. Boom. Look at that. Well, I All heard right. that Lee Ditworth. I have no clue what happened. Um, Lee Ditworth is having a big uh, Valentine's Day party, so I figure we all head over there. Dude, how cool. Did you see Clayton? Clayton? Him and I his did. wife have reunited. Warms how? your heart. Reunited. Clayton Merwin. He's too busy to be on tonight. He better not be on tonight. What's that? He better not be here tonight. <laughs> he better not be. They're probably uh, they're probably on that bang train, man. We'll, we'll be boom, oh. boom, boom. Oh my god! <laughs> you know. Banging in the morning, banging in the evening, oh banging at supper time. Oh jeez, where's what? our guest for God's Bang sake. away, bro. I am working on getting him back on. All right. Uh, how far along on your book, Nile? Uh, script is written. And character design, I'm roughing pages, and I'm working on a uh, video to expose it to the world, 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 world. Excellent, excellent. Actually, I'm going to send everything to Billy first. And he's going to be like, this sucks. No, I would love to see it, this though. This sucks. This sucks. You got to send it to JC J J J Vaughn, too. I'm like, this is the worst thing I've ever read in my life. No, Everything's so I veiny. You need veins. You need veins, Jeff. <laughs> Hey, what'd you think of the Oscars, Scala? Did you watch the Oscars? Did you watch the no. Academy Awards? No, I just Google it the next day to see what's popping. You know, who you really won didn't what, care, did you, Scala? You didn't I care don't. at all. I don't. You know, I, I go for the fashion, and uh, this year they just weren't bringing it. They weren't bringing the heat. I hear um, you. 
I've got to get this gentleman set up here. He's got to log back in. That's all he's got to do is log back in. Log back in. All you got to do is log back in. Come on, Jim. Log back in. Log back. How's my De Niro? He's a fucking asshole. You kind of look like him. You look like De Niro had a stroke. Yeah. Like a stroked out De Niro. <laughs> stroked out De Niro. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, uh, man. Scala is not a movie buff. Nah. Scala is not a movie buff, is he? Nah. Nah. Come on now. Come on now. What's going on here? Hmm. Any crazy controversies going on today in comics? Scala, have you heard of anything? I haven't. Well, I know Birds of Prey is not doing too well. Birds of Prey is not doing okay. And I got to tell you, um, I had posted it earlier. Um, I guess on maybe on the um, one of the, I think it was a, uh, it was on Twitter. Someone had talked about it. And I really think that if they had stuck with, this is twice that Jimmy Pomiati has written a property that made it really successful, right? And it was made into a film. And it's also twice that they basically didn't want Jimmy's input in on the character, on, on the books. And the first time was with Jonah Hex, and it deviated away from their amazing run on, on, on Jonah Hex. And uh, and the same thing with Harley Quinn. And, I mean, let's let's face it. I mean, Bruce Tim, you know, is a genius. But Jimmy Pomiati is really the one, and, and, and Amanda Connor that really got her away from the Joker, from that really abusive relationship turned her into an anti-hero with a heart of gold um, yeah. and made it the, you know, the smash hit that it is. And that's what led to the suicide squad movie. The initial one, my, my take on the skull, and this is just my take buddy. But um, I think if they had followed Jimmy's formula, they could have made it. They didn't have to make a, a suicide squad film. They didn't have to make a birds of prey film. I would have made a Harley Quinn film told that story of how this, this woman in this, you know, this this woman in this abused relationship with a psychopath with it with the Joker is able to escape that. And the whole film is about her breaking that bond with the Joker and then becoming this anti-hero, again, you know, with a heart of gold. And it could have been seen as a small movie. I think Margot Robbie definitely could have carried the film on her own. And then maybe have uh, a, a guest star or, um, you know, like a special guest or a cameo or something and introduce like say poison Ivy. Yeah. I think that would have been great. I think it would have been great to have her take on the underworld or the politicians or whatever, like those that say Batman can or wouldn't, um, of Gotham. And I think it would have been a great story. It could have been about, you know, like, like what they did with the Joker about mental health and all, but a lot lighter, you know? And uh, that's just my my take on it. Yeah. You know what it is? I think a lot of it is kind of this – it's like for, they're force-feeding. And, uh, you know, from what I'm reading, I mean, even like the, the, the script isn't strong. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen it yet. So, you know, I'm not uh, – I, I don't – I can't judge. But that's the way it looks. And, I mean, you, you didn't care about any of the characters. I mean, none of them looked like the comic book characters. No one knew who they were. They just looked like a bunch of women going around – beating up some people but they never explained who they they're were not even up. recognizable though so like if someone yeah. was just flipping through and like what's this it's like all right i see harley quinn but who is this right because they're changing too much they're yeah. force feeding stuff down everyone's throats and don't get me wrong i'm not trying to praise the whole thing you know everyone wants diversity and comics and you know female empowerment and i'm all for it but just write a good script just write a good yeah. script and don't change things too much or or change it so there's somewhat like somewhat i can recognize one of them or something i mean you couldn't even wreck it. Like Huntress didn't look like Huntress. I didn't even know Huntress was in it. I just thought uh, when yeah. I saw what Black Canary was, I was like, what? That's Black Canary? So, you know, it's like you're dealing with characters that aren't A-list characters to begin with. And mm -hmm. then they totally make turn them into D-list characters automatically. Yeah. And, then, and that's a recipe for disaster. But again, you know, these Hollywood producer, you know, these... These people whose Uncle Bob gets him a job or something like that, they know far more than the people that actually have given these characters life. Well, I mean, like, what, why, why are the CW shows so good for DC? Because they didn't far, they didn't go too far right. from the characters. You know, they changed the characters up personality-wise, but they, they still kept the roots of the characters. Yep. 
Yeah, that's absolutely. why the shows do, the shows do so well. So you can make a certain character, a certain ethnicity. Uh, they can have certain, you know, they OBG, you know, what they can be gay, whatever they need to be, and no one cares because the stories, the scripts are good, the shows are good. That's still the character, right? You that know? should never define a character. No, is 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 who the, what they look like or what their sexual preference is or whether they're you know oh I'm an Irish guy you know like uh, you know I thought that um. Uh, which we call it did a great play on that in yep. Jim. You uh, good? Yeah. Uh, hey. <laughs> I think I that, uh, just real quick, we're just talking about birds of prey. And I thought that, um, you know, I thought it was funny how uh, in um, awesome powers, how he made fun of those stereotypes of the villains, you know, yeah. and, you know, lucky charms. Remember that, you know, he was like, <laughs> oh, I'm always, they're always after me. Lucky charms, you know, <laughs> but, I think that that's, you know, you don't define a character because all oh, the characters are Irish. So now we have to do all Irish cliches and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, the same thing with all oh, the, the characters gay or the character is this, the character is that. That doesn't matter. It shouldn't, it, it shouldn't matter, you know, what a character is. It's really who the character is. And, uh, and that's just a recipe for disaster. It really is. Yeah. I've had arguments with people from, for, from she, like you, you don't even know. With with these with these so called experts, and I'm glad I didn't go the way with them because they w could have ruined my you know what I mean, my franchise. So <laughs> yeah, Hero and Bird just says hi guys. Just came in. Birds of Prey was terrible, which is horrible because they were like hyping it. They were so looking forward to this movie. But, you know, even asking you know Chuck Dixon and stuff. So hearing it from Hero and Bird, I'm like, oh wow, yeah, dude, I, mean, I wouldn't go with the Heroin Bird. I wouldn't go against Heroin Bird. No way. No, Jerry Connolly had a bad nuclear take on it today, blaming male audiences. Look at that. I don't know what do you. Well, let's talk about. Uh, let's talk about Red something Thomas interesting. Presents, bro. Yes. Let's get to that KS man. All right, Mr. Jim Noble. Tell us about yourself, buddy, and then we'll get into your project. Yeah. Tell us how you got into comics, you weirdo. Yeah, how'd you get into comics? <laughs> Weird people. Well, uh, comics. you know, I started collecting comics when I was a kid. My dad gave me his collection, his uh, Chris Claremont run of the X-Men. Nice. That's really what got me into comics. Um, and, uh, you know, I was in the Navy for four years. and uh, hey, I was. Uh, thank you for your service. Thank you for your service, yeah, buddy. I, I, used to, I used to drive submarines, put warheads on foreheads, but, you know. Those days are past me now. And uh, when I was in the Navy, though, I was spending all my money just buying comic books. Like all my all my paycheck, you know, if I wasn't going to a drink, it was going to comics. And <laughs> nice. this, I got hang out with you, Jim. So, oh man, you got to fit so, right uh, in. When when I got out, I didn't know what what I was really gonna what, what uh, sorry what I was really gonna do when I got out. So I was like, well, I guess you know I'll just you know get a part time job and just sell comics. And uh, I was selling comics to a guy, and he goes, hey, you're really good at grading comics. And I was like. I don't know anything about grading comics. He goes, no, you should talk to uh, Steve Morak over at CBCS Comics. Yeah. And uh, that was 2015, and I've been a uh, professional comic book grader for five years now with CBCS. Oh, wow, and, cool. Wow. So I, I've been doing that, and uh, a year ago I was like, you know, I see a lot. Of, you know, I see I'm, a, I'm the modern comic book expert at CBCS, and I see like just about every single book that's published from indie to, you know, the big, the big guys, Marvel, DC, Image. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you know, some of these guys, some of these comics are being made, and you know, I can make, I could write a better story than some of these. And I was like, well, well, I might as well just do it and show people. So last year, uh, I came out with my first issue for my for my my main series, the Totally Rad Life of Violet. Uh, and Billy, I actually showed you that a week before I came out with it, and you said it was the best opening line in a comic that you've read in 25 years. And uh, I was going to get to that one, but we could tell that story because we got it. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it, I, uh, you know, I, I thought it was a, a fun line and, you know, it's not all comics start like that. I figured, you know, because I, I make adult, I make adult comic books because like, mm -hmm. basically what I saw being made, I, I've seen comics, you know, with naked ladies on the covers, but there's no naked ladies on the inside. Yeah. And I figured, you know, that's kind of like false advertising. Why not, you know, make a comic with naked ladies on the inside? And that's how I really started. I'm a huge fan of the 1980s. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I figured I'll just write what I love and. I sold out of my first my first series within about two weeks, and then I did a Kickstarter for my second issue, and I made uh, on a goal of eight hundred dollars. I made eight thousand. <laughs> oh, nice! <laughs> Look at that. So, so I I figured I had something going on, and so then I created Totally Rad Comics Presents, and I wrote two of the three stories. The other story is written by uh, 
Giovanni Barunda. And, you know, we, we're just, we have so many books that we're planning out on coming out through Totally Rad Comics this year. And mm -hmm. I'm just constantly writing new stories. And, you know, when I'm not doing Totally Rad comic stuff, I'm actually, I'm also writing for Cherry Comics for uh, Larry Wells. Wow. Oh, I'm nice. going to be on the uh, issue 24 that they come out with in, in a couple months. Uh, I met Larry at a show. I showed him my book. And his wife, you know, she was like, well, you know, Larry's always looking for writers and artists. And I was like, well, my artist would love to work with you guys. I'd love to write a story because, I mean, I love Cherry Comics. So I didn't, I, I didn't know they were bringing it back. And they told me they were bringing it back. I was like, okay, let's do it. <laughs> oh, nice. Congrats. Yeah. yeah, I see that Cherry shirt. Yeah, I'm a huge fan. And I, I told him I'd wear it tonight, you know, and give him a shout out. <laughs> represent, go, represent. A couple people uh, saw that saying, nice T-shirt. Nice cherry shirt. Steph Wilson, Jim never stops going. <laughs> yeah, Steph. Steph Wilson's great. He's done quite a few covers for me, and, you know, he's probably one I'm of my – I'm seeing my Steph Wilson on movies. everything, man. Everything. He is wonderful. Yeah. You know, it's fantastic. I love his I love his little, his design, his style. It's so fun. Oh, yeah. And his anatomy is perfect. And he's always coming up with ideas for me. And I'm like, yep, let's do it. Like, I never I never tell him to change anything. I'm like, yeah, you know, big boobs, let's do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Perfect anatomy. <laughs> but hey, ain't let's get over that. There ain't nothing wrong with that, my friend. Ain't nothing wrong with that, homie. All right, let's get your, uh, so let's get your campaign up, man. Let's take a look at what you guys have going on on Kickstarter. All right. Beautiful. All right, so you are currently so you have eight days left to go. You have seventeen backers, and you're currently, you know, at a pledge of a thousand. Uh, you guys have now broken over eight thousand. That's fantastic! Wow, good for you, buddy. And you have um, now this is a two comic book feature for this campaign. It's so it's it's actually three. three. Uh, okay. the, the third was unlocked. It was a stretch goal, and uh, so we unlocked that at two thousand dollars. And I also, there's two sketchbooks on there by my uh, artist, Alfred Lay, who does all the artwork for all my Totally Rad comics. Oh, nice. Fantastic. Um, and if you don't mind, we'll uh, play the video for the viewers out there. All right. All right. Hang tight, everyone. And let's check out uh, Totally Rad Comics Double Feature.
<laughs> Dude, some of that, that music had me going, bro. <laughs> yeah, my good like, my good friend actually made that music for me. Yeah, it was like that, like kind of that. It was almost like eighties techno or something. Totally loves the eighties. You could totally yeah. see it. Yeah, that's great, man. It's a shame that we, I got. I don't know. Maybe we should. I should leave us up on the side in the future so people can see us dancing and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. We really don't. Yeah, I was like, and dude, the art looks amazing, Jim. The art's great, man. Thanks. So you want to give us a little insight yeah. on the, on the property? Give it. Give us insight on the book center and give us insight on your artists. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, Alfred Lay. You know, he he did all the artwork for for all three stories. Uh, the first story. Which is written by uh, Giovanni Barunda. It's a it's a eighty slasher type story. Uh, he's a huge fan of the 80, uh, 80 slashers as well as as I am, and he had this idea for a story. And I said, "All right, well let's let's do it," you know, because he was talking about. It. I was like, "Well, let's make it." And he goes, "Well, I don't have the money for that." I was like, "Don't worry about it. I'm, I'll cover you." So, you know, I I helped him make the book. You know, I paid the artist and everything, and uh, so then I was like, "Well, you know, we didn't have enough pages for a full story." I was like, "Well, why don't we do?" Why don't we do uh, my my sexy clown book? You know, I, you know, I'm tired of seeing uh, the all these scary clowns that are coming out, like the new It movies and all that. And I was like, what what about all the sexy clowns? Like, there's no real good sexy clown. I mean, Harley Quinn's kind of a clown, but you know, you, you don't get to see her naked because you know DC doesn't like nudity. And uh, I figured, well, let's let's do let's create my own character, and it's it's a fun book, and the, all my books in the totally rad universe, they all connect in some way. So in the totally rad universe, Roxy feel good is actually a movie. And in issue two of my main series, the totally rad life of Violet, she goes to the movie theater and you can see on the wall, there's a poster for Roxy feel good. And, uh, neon, the neon story that Giovanni wrote actually has Violet, my main character as a supporting character in that story. And it takes place about three years before my main series takes place. So out of all the characters in the 80 slasher series, Obviously, my main my character won't be dying, but that's probably the only one. You never know. It's a slasher. And then the the third story, which I call, originally I titled it "Totally uh, Topless Babes from Outer Space," but nice. I figured it would be a lot easier to sell as "Totally Rad Babes from Outer Space." So I changed the name. And originally, that was actually a uh, a script I wrote for uh, Critters the movie. Uh, I'm a huge Critters fan. And I figured, well, no, the, no one makes Critters comic books. No one's ever done that. And I, I called Warner Brothers up because they own the property and, you know, we were talking and but then they said, no, we don't want to make that into a comic. And I was like, OK, well, I'll just, you know, make my own version of Critters. And that's that's how the topless page from Outer Space came came about. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. And the art is great, but it's also right. Look how much fun it is. It is. And I have to go back because I got something funny for Frank. Amazing. Actually, I'm just going to do it now. While it's on the top of my head here. You know, what I'm talking about Billy. Is Frank amazing here. Frank Amazing is in the chat. And Frank Amazing's favorite game is rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Frank. <laughs> scissors, lizard. <laughs> Sorry, I, just, I saw that. And the first thing, literally, first thing I thought of mind was Frank. <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. He likes that game, but he never has any rocks and he's out of paper. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, all this art is great. I mean, I, I love all this here. This is how many different artists have worked on this project? Uh, <laughs> I should have counted, but I know that there's over 42 covers uh, wow. available to choose from. And I want to say around close to 20, 20 artists, I want to say. I, I figured so cool. I'd give everyone a variety, you know. I'm sure, you know, there's you like one cover, you like another cover. Or some people, I know a couple of my fans, they want to buy every single cover that I do. Oh, I can imagine. Oh, yeah. Well, wait, they're so eclectic, too. And they're just so they're Like I said, they're just so much fun. And it's good to see, you know, like, oh, yeah. you know, you know, where, you know, we so many books are so conservative and all. And it's kind of fun to see someone just really pushing that envelope and, and getting it out there. And, and uh, you know, just what the hell? You can do whatever you want. You're a self-publisher, you know? Yeah. I don't Publish have to worry about the kind of comic you want. Exactly. That, that's what. That's one thing I love is you know I don't have to worry about censorship. Yeah. The printer. The printer that I use. They're super nice. Uh, Artist Express. Uh, Antonio D. Yeah. Super yeah. cool dude. He said we'll print up anything you do. And I was like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we love Antonio, man. We love him. Yeah. yeah he's, he's he's such a nice guy. Hell yeah, and he's uh, kicking some ass right now. It's it's yeah, good to he's see. He's a tough son of a bitch. Hey. I'll tell you oh, that. Yeah. 
Yeah. He's got, and he's got some high spirits up, which is, which is phenomenal. Yep. So he'll, it's good. He's uh, you know, as you, I don't know if the people out there know Antonio's uh, you know, he's having some, some health scares. He's uh, but he's kicking ass, man. Yep, he's, he's doing great. He's a hero it. of ours and, you know, it's uh, he's he's unbelievable. He's a trooper. He really is. This Trevor Grace one, I really like. Oh yeah, that's my that's probably one of my favorite ones. Like yeah. Trevor Trevor did that last summer when when I first told him about the character. I had, I had nothing else. I had no drawings. He goes, "Oh, well, let me draw something up." I'm like, "Look, I don't have like here's what you'll like the colors and like the outfit." And she, he's like, "Okay, well, check this out." And I was like, "Oh, I love it." <laughs> yeah, no, this is great. And then you've got. Um... That's beautiful. All of too. Wendy's. Well, these yeah. are Wendy. This is Wendy uh, Shaner. Billy. Oh, she's amazing. You know what's she, crazy? Our stuff. When I was so scrolling nice. through, I was like, "Who's this cosplayer?" Right, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> I was like, "Oh, wait a minute. That's CG, that's CGI. Like, yeah. that's a three D yeah. animated." But when you're scrolling through, like, I, I for me, I really was like, "Oh wow, that's <laughs> that's not a real person." It was the fingernails. Yeah, Wendy, Wendy was super nice, super nice with these covers. Like she blew me away. I was like, I, I got a couple people that asked me. They go, "Who's the cosplayer for those covers?" I was like, "That's that's not a cosplayer. That's Wendy's art." <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. So this is well, you've got issue one now. Now, what was your first book that you crowdfunded? The first book that I ever crowdfunded was Totally Rad Life of Violet Number Two. Because when <clears> I did <throat> number one, I said, "I don't need crowdfunding. I want to show people I can make my own book." But looking back, I, I, I should have done crowdfunding. That way I could have done more with number one. But, yep. you know, it, it was it was a learning experience. So issue two, I did crowdfunding and I did I did really well, but like way better than I expected. <laughs> yeah. Now, let me ask. So so you've got an adult themed comic, right? Yeah. Um, the premise of the book. I mean, if you don't mind me asking, like, where where's the future of this headed? Like after this campaign's done like where do you see your um you know your characters and your stories going down the road well i have it all i have it all written and planned out you know um after after this kickstarter uh neon uh, the next victim is going to be the name of the neon series number one that comes out uh the same time that totally rad life of violet number three comes out which will be in june and then my roxy feel good ongoing series will come out in october just in time for halloween yeah, but I also have about four other uh, comics that I plan on coming out with this year. One of which is if we reach eleven thousand eleven thousand dollars on this Kickstarter, uh, everyone gets a free copy of it. Uh, the free copy, uh, the first eight pages of the of the new comic that that I plan on coming out with. Now I have a question because Super Duper has posted a question. He goes, but it's on Kickstarter. We want Indiegogo. Um, are you familiar with Indiegogo? And have you seen how it's really grown? As far I'm familiar as with it, and with I, it. I've seen I've seen how how it's been going. I just I've never done it. Like this is my second Kickstarter, so mm -hmm. I've never even thought about doing Indiegogo yet. And would you ever consider, you know, once this campaign's done, maybe looking at what you did for your first campaign and this campaign, and maybe doing a uh, Indiegogo intro? Oh yeah, and absolutely. Trying to reach another audience because Indiegogo, and it's interesting. I read an article, and and we, you know, we we like both platforms. Don't get me wrong. But I've I've really been paying attention to Indiegogo, and even the CEO and everyone that's involved are like, you know what? Look, if independent creators want to come here, let's make this the platform where they can post their stuff. You know, they don't have to worry yeah, yeah. about anything, right? Yeah. They don't have to worry about getting kicked off. They don't have to worry about anything like that unless it's something egregious. But um, you know, I don't mean to interrupt you real quick. Uh, my my things about to die, and I I because I had to grab a different laptop because I got cut out. Oh uh, no, can I grab my charger. <laughs> yeah, by all means, please go yeah. ahead. We could talk about it. Yeah, we'll just send him backstage. Yeah, no, the, his project is perfect for uh, Indiegogo. It's perfect for Indiegogo. It really is, and he could just he can really. Um, I think I think especially with the subject matter, you know. Yeah, it's funny just funny. And, like and, it, he obviously doesn't he doesn't care. He's not. No, you know, he, he's not. He's his own man. You know, you could see he's a he's a Navy man and a, you know an event. Oh, yeah. He oh, he's yeah. like, no, oh, this is what I want to do, and this is what I'm doing. And, well, yeah, but I mean, you know, I've been really looking at it, and it's like you know, I have nothing against Kickstarter, right? Um, but yeah. what I'm seeing with Indiegogo, and really it's just an idolized platform. I mean, you know, you can go right into demand. You can keep working on your book while keep selling your book. Like, you don't have to have a cutoff. Yeah. You know, and that's huge. You know, you basically set your own cutoff. Like, all right, you know what? I need three more months to finish the book before it goes to print and I can fulfill. So in the meantime, why don't I get a final count? I'll keep working on the book to finish it because then I'll just need to know how many I need to print. Right? Yep. So, I mean, it's really 
kind of a no-brainer. But, uh, yeah, it's just funny, though, how uh, people are kind of, uh, I don't want to say leery, but they're kind of like, oh, you know, I don't know if I should do Indiegogo. And Well, it's interesting how Indiegogo, you know, has is, is been around longer than Kickstarter, but Kickstarter mm -hmm. really took off. Yeah, you know? Kickstarter I mean, was just lucky. Really, you know, Kickstarter really had, it seems, a big head start, It's I guess, in comics, you know? Yeah, well, they had a they had some really big products. That's why. Yeah, you know, and some of those really big products flop too. But it helps spread Kickstarter's name, you know. Yep. We but I mean, you look at how it's going with you know you you look at at the at the comparisons between the two, and again, nothing against Kickstarter, um, you know, because I've done really well. I I mean, I owe so much to Kickstarter and our Kickstarter backer partners, mm -hmm. but Indiegogo just seems to really be especially in the past couple of years, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it's really taken off and the fans in, in Indiegogo seem to be, I, I think they seem a lot more engaged. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. With the creators. Yeah. It's just like an online comic store. It really is. Yeah. You know, it is. That's the, you know, and then, and I think with the way they have it set up, it is really favorable for, you know, and that's the thing, like maybe it's not even for all types of creators, but I think for comic book creators, it's definitely a good platform. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, for tech creators and things like that, maybe not. Maybe it's good for them to just run their 30 days and have their cut off and do whatever. But I think for what it takes to make a comic book and the time in between and the fact that at the end of the day, it's just, you know, getting your final count when you finally make that cut off, you might as well leave that going, yeah. you know? Yep. So, hey, Jim. Hey. Jim, there uh, you go. So how many days does Jim have left, Nile? Uh, what do you got? Eight? Is it eight? Yeah, eight days. Eight, eight days, days to go. So you got eight days left. Wait, can we all go back to the page? Yep. Bring that back up. Oh no, super duper! What I really liked you. Do? I really liked you, and now you've just have any of you seen this trash lock and key show on Netflix? <laughs> super duper. I haven't seen it. I haven't. Seen, I seen the ads for it. I haven't watched it yet. Super duper. Is, that, is, that, is he hurting you now? Is he wounding you? I'll put it this way. It was entertaining. It was entertaining. I mean, it's nothing to write home about. It was entertaining. Like, you know, it's not a waste of time to watch it. A few things kind of, like I was saying to my wife when we were watching it, and uh, I was like, you know, some things just were too easy, right? Like, that would never happen. I'm sorry. It's like they fast forwarded some things, you know? Uh, so, oh, what's he got to say? What are we saying here, Super Duper? You know what, Super Duper? I forgive you. I forgive you. <laughs> Super Duper. It was really bad, like, right <laughs> like really bad, like right away. <laughs> it has its moments. It's freaking nice. All right, let's get back to our so guest. He's very busy, he's a, and he's a Navy man. He's yes. a submariner. He hasn't. He has no time for bullshit, right? <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, Jim. Back to business. Back to business. Okay. All right. it's now so, that you got your charge, uh, Jim. What was your rank? Or rating? What do you guys call yourselves in the Navy? Oh, well, I mean, I started out as the lowest of the low. I was a seaman recruit. Then I worked my way up to seaman apprentice. Then I was the seaman for the second time in my life. And then, uh, <laughs> and then boom, boom. I became a, uh, a third class <laughs> petty officer. And that's All that's right, how I, I left the Navy as a third class. All right. So you're looking at uh, you've got 85. You got over eight thousand dollars. What's okay. your goal? One thousand. A million. Well, that's his ultimate goal. A million dollars. Yeah, I mean, that'd be pretty cool. What's his goal? Eight grand. His goal is a thousand, and goal they, a thousand. And they made right. eight. Eight All grand. Right. All eight thousand ninety-five dollars. What you're gonna do? Because we we have learned on our show, buddy, that you have people that are exclusive only to Kickstarter, and people that are exclusive only to Indiegogo, and the Indiegogo audience seems to be growing leaps and bounds. Um, if I was you, if I were you, when your campaign ends in eight days and you hit over $25,000 on this, then you, then you go and you start a whole nother 38 campaign and you do that on Indiegogo. Do you think that, uh, you think it'll work, work out well on Indiegogo? Absolutely. What do you got to lose? Even if you ask for $500 and you make 501, it doesn't cost That's anything. That's true. Right. You know? And I got I got yeah. a lot of covers to choose from on that on there too, so I'm sure a lot of people will will jump on at least one. <laughs> yeah, and you can and, and uh, you know you can come back on when that launches, right, Niall, and we could talk it up. 
Oh yeah, I would definitely. Yeah, I think this is a great book. I think the you know Indiegogo audience would like, and I think you'd find uh, a better draw because right now, like I said, Indiegogo is really all the way up to the CEO. They're really pushing comic books. They really, really? are. They want it yeah. to be the you know they want everyone to do it. You know, they're not just saying you know you have to be this person or that person. You know, they're not going to kick you off. They're not going to do certain things. You know, right. put your books on enjoy, have fun, enjoy good comics, because at the end of the day, you know, the higher ups are comic book fans. They yeah. love that their platform is becoming more comic book based. They like that. They like having that media and that draw of having comics. So, um, you know, it's definitely a good shot. But again, you build your brand where you build your brand. Remember that, you know, right. you can't expect to jump over to another platform and do better than you have done. And, uh, you know, yeah. guys like Brian Pleater are like, you know what, there's an Indiegogo crowd. I'm going to try it out. So he did. You know, he did fairly well for himself. It was nowhere near the six-figure campaigns he does for uh, Kickstarter. But that's he went in there knowing right. that, that it's completely new territory. It's yeah. like when he just did Kickstarter for the first time. And he wanted to see what kind of response he would get. Because if the response was good, you know, maybe he does move on. You know, maybe he goes over to Indiegogo if the response is better, you know? Um, yeah. But just some food for thought, you know, because since we, you know, our show is crowdfunding comics, we do a lot of research and, you know, we got to have a little of that, you know, hey, I have an idea for you, you know, because yeah. everyone has an ideas, right? Everyone's got an idea about something. Oh, yeah. I'm but, cool. Um, <laughs> cool about Indiegogo is that they want to be the comic book crowdfunding platform. They do. Yeah. They want to beat Indiegogo. They're completely aware. I mean, of Kickstarter, they're completely aware of Kickstarter, <laughs> but they're hyper aware of their numbers that they've been getting. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, on on Indiegogo. So, um, well, you've you know, got books now reaching a million dollars. Try all different sorts of things, um, and uh, I don't. And it can't hurt, man. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, books are now reaching the million dollar mark at the end of campaigns. Kickstarter's yeah. not doing that. You wow. Know? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely it's definitely a good avenue to explore if you have the time or or if, if you're feeling ambitious. I mean, there's really. You know, you can set it up so that if you don't make your goal, you don't, you know, it doesn't cost anyone anything, you know, just like Kickstarter. Right. Well, and the, the thing, the thing of my books is like the, I've already paid for the art and everything. And mm -hmm. so it's basically just ready to print. So I really have nothing, nothing to worry about. If it doesn't get funded, I mean, I'm still going to make the book. <laughs> yeah. And, and then you can bring in Seth Wilson in for uh, some new variant covers for Indiegogo only. So. Oh, I'm sure he's already on it right now. <laughs> so you have your, yeah, you have your Indiegogo exclusive cover, and then you'll get your Kickstarter backers who go to them because they're going to want another one of his covers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you, that. yeah if you do do it, I would definitely – I wouldn't just take – I would definitely, like, do it like a new campaign. You know, yeah. the, the stories and the books and everything, you know, all the interiors could be the same, but maybe you'd want to focus on, yeah, some different variant covers, maybe some different stretch goals or, you know, little trinkets and treats. Uh, right, whichever you want to call it, but yeah, you know, if, if you if you feel like it, you know, test the waters, see what goes for you. Maybe you'll you'll build up an even bigger audience and uh, be able to grow your brand and continue growing. Uh, totally rad comics. Yeah, I'm 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 hoping this year is going to be a big year for us. I got so much planned out, so many amazing. And you just you got another backer, so you're now at 118 backers. So you're now at eight thousand one hundred sixty-two dollars. Oh, wow. <laughs> So thank you out there, whoever backed. If you're in the chat, you know, let them know you backed it. Excellent. Perfect. That's so, amazing. so let me ask you, um, Jim, with this book, um, you know, you've got this going on. You got like these these bad girl comics. Uh, you know, you know, not just nudity on the cover. You want to bring it into the pages. Uh, do you have any other books coming out? Anything that's not like uh, anything bad girl books wise? Are you working on anything different? Well, you know, I try to write something different and then, you know, I'll, I'll get to the point where, you know, she's wearing clothes and then the next panel, she's not wearing clothes. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm actually, I'm, I am working on a fantasy book, like a PG-13 for all ages, because it'd be a lot easier to sell at shows than I could sell to everybody. Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually, I'm already working the script on that and uh, I'm going to have my artist jump on that in March. And uh, I think that'll be a fun book. I can't really say much about it right now because I plan on releasing it at a convention that I plan on going to in the next couple of months. Oh, nice. Now, where, and, where are you, uh, what shows are you going to be at? Uh, this year, uh, I, I'm going to be doing a lot of, I, I live in uh, Dallas, Texas. So I do a lot of the local Dallas shows, the fan expo, the Dallas fan days, the, the North Texas comic shows, but also I'll be uh, my big show this year. I'll be at Baltimore comic con 
And I'm actually going to be bringing my artist, Alfred Lay, who lives in Mexico. I'm bringing them all the way over from Mexico to Baltimore to do the show with me. So it'll be the first time that both me and him are at a convention. Oh, Scala. That's really cool. This is not going to be good. I know we're gonna get so fucked up. No. We have Isaac <laughs> Con, normally Scotch Con, uh, Isaac Con. Um, we gotta, you gotta come with, bro. You gotta come yeah. with. Saturday night, it's gonna get crazy. No sleep, man. Scotch There's no con. sleep Saturday, Saturday night. night. It's an all night affair. Excellent. Are you in? You well, you we're dragging you in. So whether you, oh yeah, yeah, I'm definitely in. Yeah, I'm not gonna say right. no. <laughs> We got Jim Michaelek from the Long Island Comic Guys, and he's a Navy guy too. So he'll be there. He was on, um, I think it was on Destroyers, actually. Oh, he's on, he was on, uh, that, that's what Submariner's called Targets. Yeah. <laughs> he was on the Targets. <laughs> well, Isaac, which Isaac Khan was named after, he's a Submariner too. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's, you know, so uh, I would just sleep a lot the week before. <laughs> Drink a lot of water. Yeah, hydrate, <laughs> get stuff going. It's going to be painful. It's going um, to be painful. <laughs> Demonstricus Phil, if I said that right. Uh, oh, I backed it and promoted it on my social media. That guy is awesome. Yeah, he's def- he's been a supporter on quite a few of my uh, my books. Nice. Super nice guy. I backed. Oh, and uh, he also backed Care. I backed a lot. I have a Kickstarter problem. We all have Kickstarter and Indiegogo <laughs> problems. Uh, hey, Lou's joining us, Billy. I. Lou? Yeah, Lou. Lewis. What's up, Billy? All right. All right. Lou, Lou, what's up? Hey. <laughs> oh, man, another surgery, bro. Another surgery, bro. Feel better, hey, man. Feel better. Hang in there. Feel better, buddy. That's that's Louie T, man, one of our boys. Good guy. Good guy. Great supporter of, of everything. Oh, we got, Mar- we got, and we got Mark in the uh, waiting room. Yes, Mark is backstage. Um, if anyone else, uh, you know, we're going to be switching over to our second guest tonight. Um, actually, Jim, if you want to hang out, since we've had technical difficulties, you're more than welcome as we bring Mark on the show. We'll leave that. Sure, up to yeah, you. I'd like to say a little. All right, fantastic. So, without further ado, ado, everyone, we've got our next guest tonight. His name is Mark Stanislavski. Uh, he is a Connecticut native in my in my home state, and has become a good friend of mine. He's a phenomenal creator who's been writing books uh, for many years. So, everyone, welcome Mark Stanislavski. What's up, guys? Yeah, Mark, yeah. <laughs> Hello, buddy, how are you? Good. How you doing? Doing great, Mark. Good to see you, pal. Good to see you. How's everything going, man? Uh, it's going. It looks like you know, you're funded. We are funded. Uh, that's that's good. So I don't have to worry about it anymore. There you <laughs> go. Fantastic. And uh, Mark, we've got Jim Noble joining us. Uh, Jim, Mark, Mark, Jim, Mark. How's Billy. it going, man? How's it going, Jim? I'm going to be uh, back in your project as soon as I get off here tonight. Oh, thank you very Fantastic. much. Yeah, no we're problem. actually talking about uh, your project, and uh, he he saw the first uh, issue. Was it Venus Invades Mars? Was that it? Was that the oh, one? Mars Invades it? Venus. Or Mars Invades Venus, yeah. Nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, the, uh, the great thing about those books is uh, the creator, Larry Nadolsky, uh, came to me, and he had this, this idea. And originally, it was a coffee table art book with maybe a paragraph of prose on each page. And uh, hi, Wendy. And uh, I was like, well, you know that's nice and all, but I'm not sure if I wanted to do something like that. And then he turned around and he sent me like the first three or four pages and he goes, Oh, is this better? And I was like, uh, yeah, (laughs) yeah, yeah, that's better. Okay. Let's do this. So. Awesome. So Mark, um, so for anyone out there that's not familiar with you, can you please give us kind of like your origin story, like how you got into comics, you know, where you started writing and stuff like that. Uh, I've been reading comics for about, 40 years now. Um, a friend introduced me back in the late seventies. Uh, and as soon as I saw the first comic, that was it. I was in love. Um, I pretty much gobbled up everything I could. Um, in the beginning, uh, the center of our town, there was just a newsstand and, uh, all they basically had was Marvel DC Archie. That's it. There was no Indies, uh, nothing else. So I got my, you know, I cut my teeth on Spider-Man, Batman, Superman, uh, all of that. And then uh, a couple of years later, uh, the first comic book store opened up about a block and a half away. 
and uh, then I got introduced to indie comics, and that was it. You know, I'm, I seem to have an affinity for indie, indie comics and was drawn to them. Um, you know, the weird characters and the stories that they told were uh, uh, were, were different than, than the mainstream stuff, and I, I was drawn to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think... Oh boy! A few years later, I had read a, a a story that I didn't particularly like, so uh, I says, "Oh, I could I could write a better story than this," and uh, so that's when I just decided I wanted to start writing, um, and I've been writing ever since. <laughs> oh, nice! Now, didn't you actually start writing for a publication? No, no, that was later on uh, as I wrote and wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, back then there was a, I don't know if you guys, Billy, you might remember maybe, uh, the comics buyer's guide. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And they had, they had all the, uh, the classifieds in the back and, you know, I would answer classifieds for, uh, indie books wanting, looking for a writer. Uh, so I, I hooked up with a bunch of indie, uh, companies there. Um, finally got published by personality comics. Oh, Adam Post and yeah, and and Spoof Comics. Mm-hmm. So I I did a few stuff for them. Um, yeah, and that was that was my first published work. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, Adam Post. Uh, he's been uh, making his way back into the indie scene. Yeah, he was on our show, right? When I was when I, I missed hey. him on our show. Hey, he calls himself Half Speed Tucci. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> you're both from Long Island and you have an accent. So I guess, and he's not as hyper. He's only half as hyper. As Am you. I hyper? Am I really hyper? When, when you know, when, uh, yeah, you are. Yeah, really? You're a very hyper guy. You're a lot of energy. But uh, yeah, let's check it out. So let's check out the campaign <laughs> you have here, Mark. Uh, the art's beautiful. And you know what's cool is like, it, ha- it has that like 80s indie vibe, like yeah. to the art, you know? And I love that. But so right now you, you have 16 days to go. You have 65 backers. And uh you were looking for a goal of 1200 and you guys broke that. So you broke the 1200 mark and now obviously the campaign's still going on. So guys, if you can make sure to share this for, for both of our guests tonight, make sure you share their campaigns, uh, share them on Facebook, share them on Twitter, share them on Instagram, wherever you can and spread these, spread the word of these projects. Cause they're amazing. And you know, it's a naughty night. As I said, in the description of the show, it's a naughty night. Cause we got two great writers and creators with beautiful, beautiful women in their books. Yeah. And the stories are good. The stories are really good. So let's check this out. Mark, if you can, give us kind of a synopsis of this story. Uh, maybe a little bit about the first issue, how this second issue ties in, and, and, and all of that. Yeah, well, the whole uh, the whole idea of the Venus uh, stories is that it takes place uh, before life ever showed up on Earth. Uh, but there is life on Mars, and there is life on Venus. And uh, the Martians are this technology-driven society, uh, big into science, uh, but at at the point of uh, Mars invades Venus, they're kind of dying out. So they need to find a way to, to survive and they go to Venus to try and take over Venus. And Venus is run by um, tribes of Amazon warrior women. And uh, of course, that, yeah, that's, that's, I love that page. Um, you know, even at this time in the past, Venus is hot, so everyone is scantily clothed. Uh, <laughs> as you would be. As yeah. you would be, yes. yes. And you know what's great about this? And actually, you know, I'm saying 80s, but I'm looking at the chat. And, uh, you know, Herrenberg uh, is right. You know, it's really almost 70s it's very style, 60s, like heavy metals, Rosetta style art. Yep. Um the, the I, artist, I personally dig it. I like it. Yeah, the artist Larry Nadolsky, uh, who is an incredible talent. Um, he's up in Canada, and uh, he has done work for heavy metal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. So you definitely get. That I can't. Style. And the amount of work. Holy cow. Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of detail in this. Yeah, very detailed. I love the details on that. How did you meet Larry? Uh, he when I was a publishing my books he just sent me an email and said hey would you be interested in doing publishing this Mm -hmm. and uh yeah you know 
Once you he showed that? me those those comic book pages, I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how many books are in this series or is it ongoing? Uh, we'll just keep going until people get sick and tired of it, you know. Nice. And, and how long is it taking to turn out one of these books for him to come to you with, with more material? Well, Mars Invades Venus was kickstarted, what, about a year and a half ago? Mm -hmm. um, so at the time of Mars Invades Venus, it's kind of funny because, you know, we put it up on Kickstarter and I did like an $800 goal and both Larry and I were like, yeah, it probably won't get funded, but, you know, what the heck, we'll, we'll do it anyway. And uh, we met the eight hundred dollars in like the first day, um, and it wound up uh, getting like twenty three hundred bucks. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, so we were like, okay, well, I guess we've got something here. Um, so Larry said, okay, you know, I'll I'll do another one. I'll do a sequel. I was like, okay. Uh, so that was yeah, it was about a year and a half ago. So. Oh, wow, and you guys are still moving on with the series. I mean, I, I I have the you know the books from the first campaign. Love them. Uh, you know, I love the art. I really do like that heavy metal style uh, artwork that he does. And it really is. You know, you can look at it quick and be like, oh, hey, it's kind of disproportionate and that. But it's really not. Um, you know, it, it's just the style of it. You know, it, it's it's a very clever style of illustrating. And there's a lot of detail and intricacy to it. Um, and it's something you can really appreciate when you're actually holding the book. Um, and, I, and I do have to say that it, it is I am a fan of the work. Um, you know, I can't wait to get this one. You know, I'm going to back this one as well because I need to know what goes on in the rest of the story. Um, but one thing I do want to ask, and, and I think, you know, we've had a, another creator on the show. Um, and I know you do other books and you have other campaigns on, on books that are solely your own. Um, do you have something in the works with uh, Caesar Feliciano? I do. I do. Oh, yeah. Do. I know Caesar's, Caesar's been on your, your show, I know. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to be doing a book, Gods and Soldiers. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy, wacky book, um, but uh, I don't like to do cliche anyway. So, <laughs> so when, when are you guys projecting that book? That's a, that's a, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> um, Come on, Caesar, get yeah. your ass moving on that book. <laughs> you know, we're, uh, I'm doing rewrites, you know, uh, with mm -hmm. the script here and there, doing a few things that we decided that we wanted to do. Um, right now, it's probably 104 pages. Wow. Yes, that's a big book. Yeah, that's a big, big book. book. That's a big book. That's yeah, easy. we got it easier on Caesar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like Zombie Samba 2 is over 100 pages with John Brolia. And I'm like, well, man, you know, let's make it 48 pages. Like, oh, no, I can't. I'm like, uh, all right. <laughs> Uh, Mark Heroinberg asks, uh, have you heard of the 1939 John Murray Reynolds pulp classic, Golden Amazons of Venus? This is like that, but with jungle cavemen instead of ray guns. I have not. I have not heard of I have not that. either. Billy, have I you? I have not heard of that either. You know, I really, I kind of want to get Heroinberg on the show. They bring some very interesting stuff to the chat. They make me think. They make you think. They make me think, Mark and Jim. They make they me make think. think. I'm, Google, I'm Googling, man. You're going to Google, Google it. it. It might Damn even it. be in a public domain. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, Billy's uh, De Niro. Who my just my terrible story. De Niro. I can't stand him. I think I just think he's uh, an asshole. So, but I grew up loving. I grew up loving the guy. Hey, he's yeah. a fantastic actor. Fantastic. Yeah, everybody actor. loves De Niro. I mean, come on. You can't go wrong. Do it again. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> All right. You, you're there. You're right. You done having a stroke. I'm all right. I'm beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful. Hey man, right. I've been sick for like ten days, bro. <laughs> I know. How you feeling? You good? I'm feeling good. I got hammered, man. I have not been sick, and I don't know if you guys have been sick lately, but um, I haven't been sick for three weeks. I'm sorry, three years. I haven't been sick, and I was talking to Bo Smith uh, like two weeks ago, and I'm like, oh, Bo, you know, he's like, how you doing? I said, oh, you know, kind of wish I was sick. Because I'm just getting, you know, I'm, I'm under so much pressure. You know, we're working on this book. You know, there's so many levels. And you guys know that it's not just, you're not just putting out, say, a 48-page comic book. You you know, the, then there's all the prints and all the extras and all the little, you know what I mean? And it's just yeah. such a huge endeavor. And the, the She campaign is now on the verge of doubling Zombie Sama in both backers and in, which is great. You know, and, and also everything we put in. But we have double the amount of stuff. 
So you're doing, you know, so you're all over the place, you know, working on, you know, getting uh, your, your various, um, uh, you know, reward levels, you know what I mean? And your various perks and all these things. And you're, you're talking yeah. to so many different publishers because like, like I said, we use Anto Antonio uh, for our special editions. But then again, we have the main books. And then we have another book that Antonio won't be doing because that that doesn't fit his criteria. So you get you know you get all stressed out. I'm like, man, Bo, I just wish I was sick, you know, and I could sit in bed and I could you know read this book. I'm reading a book on World War One, you know, and I could just read this book, Thunder Thunder in the Argonne, you know, yeah. for like a cup for a weekend and just have like you know my wife bring me soup and stuff, you know, and uh, it never turns out that way. And I just got really sick, and I think it was from the Albuquerque Comic Con. And I got a, bronchi a bronchial infection. I got, you know, cold sores. My whole face broke out in cold sores. That's oh, why I haven't geez. shaved in two weeks. Uh, and it's just healing now. It's, you know, and, uh, and then I got a sinus infection. So I was all messed up. And it sucks being sick. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have been sick. It really sucks. <laughs> so anyway, so now I'm just getting back to stuff. And I'm all excited, Scott, about being back here. Yeah, no, yeah, we had to have some. I'm we had to have to get one. I got the you, I got the YouTube thing here, and then I have the uh, the stream deck, stream yard here. So forgive me for being all over the place because I'm a little out of practice. I know you missed two shows, I, two whole shows. Is that's it? Yeah, Mark was saying. Mark was telling me he was like, you know, you got to boot that guy. He's not. You know, I don't think he's serious. <laughs> well, Mark's a Polish he's ninja. Mark, I don't know, man. He's not, he'll cut your throat when you're not looking. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But uh, yeah, so this is looking great, Mark. Um, now, what do you have? Do you have any other Kickstarters lined up? Anything else you're working on? Uh, yeah, we kind of want to. Uh, I kind of want to do a few of them this year. Um, I'm working with uh, there's another guy that I met. Uh, he's from Germany. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, Maximilian Meyer. Um, he's done some stuff for the rigor mortis book that I put out. It's a horror anthology, uh, digital only on comiXology. Um, and yeah, he's got a graphic novel that he wanted to do. Uh, so I'm working on that. I'm editing the script on that, converting his broken English into better English. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even my China often. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, I think after uh, after this Kickstarter is done with uh, uh, Amazon of Venus, uh, I kind of want to move it over to Indiegogo and see how we can do there. Yeah, no, that's definitely good. To multiple to multi stream at least. Um, you know, at first I we had everything set up through Kickstarter because that was just seemed like the natural thing to do. You know, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then we started doing dual campaigns. You know, we did the Kickstarter, then we went to Indiegogo and our Indiegogo numbers have now surpassed on both campaigns our Kickstarter numbers. So I'm a big fan of, of, of Indiegogo. Oh and, yeah. Um, you know, I think, I think you guys should try it, especially, you know, Jim too, that, you know, I think it's, it's perfectly set up for both your styles of books. Um, Cause I think you got a real engaged audience. I got, you got an audience that, that, looks at themselves almost as like outlaws, you know, they they feel themselves so outside of the mainstream comics. And mm -hmm. I think they both respond really super well to both your books. And yeah, with I, problems, right? I mean, you're already funded. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and it doesn't cost you anything. Nope. Yeah. What's there to lose? Nothing. Mark, how much time Everything. do you have left on your campaign? Uh, what was there? 16 days? 16 days to go. You guys are both pretty much on the same boat. Nice. So, so let me ask you guys. You know, since you're both joining us right now, um, let me ask. So, what is your guys' take on the indie comic scene right now, as far as crowdfunding is concerned? Go Jim? ahead, Jim. Jim, looks like you have a thought. You hear no? us, Jim? I'm sorry. What? No, I was saying. What is uh? You know. Do you have a – I was asking both of you over here, you know, what are your guys' thoughts <coughs> on the current state of the crowdfunding slash independent comic scene right now? I think uh, in the past year, it's exploded so much. There's so many indie creators. And the other thing I, I really enjoy about all these indie creators that are crowdfunding is a lot of them want to work with you. They want to, <laughs> they want to cross promote. And from the, from the creators that I've talked to, they love doing cross promotions. 
actually did two cross promotions. Uh, one of the guys who were doing stocking number one, and I did a cross promotion with Lincoln uh, with when she was doing the Kickstarter last month, where she pledged both. Hey, hey, Jim, I think you're covering your mic a little bit there. Yeah, I'm trying to. Yeah, is your hand covering your mic? To me? Oh, that's better. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no problem. So you were thinking, you know, like with the, the hype and, and how much has been going on in the crowdfunding scene that's really starting to blow up? Yeah, I mean, I think it's only going to go up from here. I honestly think with the way that indie comics have been going, that eventually, you know, people are going to gravitate towards getting indie comics as opposed to going to the going to the shop, getting Marvel DC mm -hmm. books, because indie comics, you know, you got all sorts of things that people have never seen before. Whereas DC, you know, yeah, you got Superman fighting, you know, Lex Luthor. You're going to see that for the for the rest of the time DC's open. But yeah. like indie comics, you know, you could get, you know, clowns and freaking people on Venus. <laughs> it's it's mm -hmm. amazing, you know, it's stuff that other publishers aren't doing. Yeah, it's free, you know, it's a it's the wild west. You can do whatever you want. You make your own rules, you know? Oh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> and you have to break oh, yeah. your own rules, right? That's what you do. That's yeah, what it's exactly. all about. You can do whatever you want. No no and one can stop you. And yep, you'll build. And yep, go ahead, well, Mark. That'll breed uh, the creativity to, to see all this good, different stuff that you you just won't see anywhere else. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. so, so Mark, what's your take on the end of it? Do you get a chance to really follow it? Uh, not really. <laughs> no. Well, um, I know you're a busy guy. That's why I asked that. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to make comics. Uh, um, but yeah, no, like Jim said, uh, you can, you can see, you can see the explosion more and more, uh, more and more campaigns, uh, both on Kickstarter and on Indiegogo. Um, a lot of comic campaigns, um, and a lot of, you know, they're making a lot of money and that's, that's a good thing. Yep. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it is a lot of good. Uh, let's see. I got a dark fantasy Western coming to Indiegogo. Oh, nice. Um, so, so Lou says, Jim and Mark, can you send me your Kickstarter links? Be brief description of your books. I'll have the Comic Collectors Guild promote the Kickstarters for you both on all social media platforms on our site. Because uh, Mark and Jim are so busy, Lou, if you can, uh, we have the links in the description to the show, and they're, and they're popping up in the chat. So if you do that, you can uh, jump onto their Kickstarter pages and grab some descriptions, and then you and you guys over at the the awesome uh, comic collectors guild can help share share those out yeah and that would help them out and help us out yes. too so if you can that'd be great um mark how oh shoot i just had a question that i lost oh my gosh you Billy, lost i just lost my question <laughs> that's the first time i've ever done that what's the matter with you? you sound like me now i know wow i think i've been infected by the tooch you've been infected it started off with an itch that's all I'm going to say. It started off with an itch. <laughs> is, that, is that like the coronavirus? The Tucci yeah. virus? <laughs> yeah, the Tucci virus. <laughs> yes, Lou, they, they do allow that. So you guys have no issues with anyone spreading the uh, your campaigns, right? Uh, no. No, not at all. All right. Fantastic. Um, Mark, now what I was going to Oh, what I was going to ask is, uh, you know, as you continue on with your stories, because you have a few series out there. I have many of them. They're very good. Um one series, uh, you know, didn't get funded on Kickstarter, which I was sad about, um, which is, you know, I guess more or less my question is, is there anyone out there that you're following on the indie scene that you would love to collaborate with? Uh, I mean, everyone. There are just so many talented people out there. Uh, I mean, any anyone and everyone. Uh, they're all great. No one in particular. No one in particular, no. Jim, what about you? Uh, there's, there's a couple of people I love to work with. Uh, a lot of people that, uh, that I've looked up to for quite a few years, actually. Uh, Dan Mendoza, Rob Michaels. Mm -hmm. So, and, and you're kind of in that whole, that whole Phoenix, like, group of creators, right? Jim? Yeah, how, do you, how, do, how, does a, how do you get, you know, um, are you there? Is that where you're located? Jim? Uh, oh, I'm in I'm in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. Dallas, yeah. So he's yeah. Like Southwest. But I know, but he's got a lot of the so like Marat Michaels, yeah. Wendy Chair, like all of you guys seem to have a lot of the same um, people working on your projects. So you know, yeah. is it by coincidence or is there like a secret circle? Ooh. Well, for me, for me, it was basically I had a wish list of all the artists that I would love to you know work with, and you know after my 
last Kickstarter, I was like, oh, I got money now, so I can pay them to do covers. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Why is his mic muted? He's not muted. He's just, I don't know. It could just be his phone. Oh, okay. Because it's hard to hear you a little bit. Jim. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no worries. We'll but, uh, yeah, now, Mark, a question for you. Um, and, and Jim had mentioned this earlier when we had him on. Um, is there any conventions you plan on hitting this year? Yeah. Um, I always go to uh, Cortland, New York, the Heroes and Villains Con. Mm -hmm. um, good people, good show. Um, When's that? I, I got, uh, that is the beginning of April. Okay. I think the first, first weekend in April. Mm -hmm. um, and then I... I'm already signed up for uh, what is that? Lock Lock City in North Haven, Connecticut. Oh, nice. Okay. So I'll be there uh, right you know now. Just to... You know that convention now? Yeah, I do. It's a good show. It's a smaller show. It's a local yeah. show, um, but yeah. it is a good show. You can sell some. When's that one, there. Mark? That is September fifth. Okay, so you got okay. Nice. I now, did, usually you don't hit Terrificon because you have a, a prior engagement, correct? An annual engagement? Yeah, it seems like every year they do it the same weekend. I'm usually away, but no, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe this year. It's going to be a crazy year this year. They've got a lot cool. of really good guests lined up. Yeah, Maybe hopefully one this... is Mark Stanislavski. Who knows? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you need the Polish ninja. The there you Polish go. ninja, yeah. Can we have you back on the show as the Polish ninja? We'll just <laughs> randomly throw you in. Like, just we'll be in conversation. You'll log in. I'll click you on. And be like, the Polish ninja's here. And you rapid fire questions at him. And then, then we randomly pull you out. And then he and picked, like, he what? had to plug his book, though. He's got to plug his book. And then he's out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, what do you do this? What do you do that? What do you do this? What do you do that? Amazon's a uh, Venus. Boom. <laughs> Mandy Taxi be in on it so she can post the link to his, you know what I mean? To to his campaigns. <laughs> that would be awesome. That would be awesome. <laughs> well, well, both of you guys, um, yes. uh, I know that 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 Niall and I will both be at both Baltimore and Terrificon. And I know Mark, you're not slated for either of those, but you are local in it. If it does work out that your annual thing is not the same weekend as Terrific Con, and you can make it down. And you too, Jim. We'd love to have you guys on our crowdfunding comics panel. Okay. Yeah. Well, if thanks. you wouldn't mind. And it's a lot of fun. We had a great we had great crowds last year for our first two of them. Mm -hmm. Uh that in San Diego Comic Con. And uh, you know, you guys we'd love to have you guys on the show with us on the on the That'd thing. Awesome. It's a very engaged panel. Um, you yeah, know, we had a good uh, panel at Terrific Con, and then we're gonna, yeah. I believe uh uh, from my talks with Mitch, uh, that we're going to have a um, another panel. Cool. I think I think he said we can have twelve guests this time. Twelve. It's going to be insane. Uh, Peter Cimetti <laughs> doesn't stop talking though. I mean, he's twelve guests all in one. No, Peter Cimetti. Oh, he's great. Come he on, don't you say that. We love Peter. He uh, is man. That guy. Have you, are you guys familiar with Alterna Comics? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love I love what they're doing. The uh, they're they're the old school the the page quality that they're doing. I really love it. Yeah. Yes. He's yeah. No. He, he's yeah. We we did a printing partnership with him for our um our our twenty fifth anniversary fan appreciation edition book, and they also did our New York Comic Con uh, mm -hmm. book because I was trying to get that same old school stock, you know. Yeah, that you really can't find anymore. And mm -hmm. he hooked us up and he found it, you know, uh, with that newsprint. You know what I mean? But newsprint today, of course, is is far superior than newsprint was, you know, 25 years ago. Right? You know, Mark, for your style books, you oh, should yeah. think about that for printing. You know what? that because that newsprint style, you know, from the you know, obviously you're familiar with newsprint. Yes. Uh, the newsprints that's used today, I mean, is far, uh, far superior than what was used then. And with that style art, I think that would really add something to the book. That's my idea. So Jim, we're going to make you do Indiegogo. And Mark, you need to start printing on newsprint. And that's our free ideas from the brain of the mainframe, Niall Scala. Thank you. <laughs> Billy, did you freeze? I think he oh, did. Dude, I'm like the whole time, I'm like, man, this guy is really engaged. What's going on tonight? We got a ceiling fan. We got a frozen Billy. We've got a, we do have a Polish ninja in the house that's, that's right. kicking some ass. Still here. But uh, there you go. So Mark, we have to get together soon. I mean, we're like a half hour apart, man. We got to get together, grab some coffee, or do something, or uh, 
you know, yeah, if you want to come back on the show, man, you're always welcome. I think that'd be cool. Thank you. Have the, the Polish. You're Polish, right? Let's just <laughs> verify that. We're verifying that on the air. <laughs> he is Polish, yes. everybody. Yes, I am Polish. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> so we will officially have Mark Stanislawski, a.k.a. the Polish Ninja, on the show. Man, we've got, and I got to tell you, while I have you on, um, we've got some great stuff lined up. Some big guests. Big guests. I, uh, I think I heard uh, one of them last week. Yes. Right? And uh, yeah, we're working on that. So I, what the thing is, I'm kind of I'm kind of torn right now because we have our hundredth episode coming up. Right. Like next week. So I'm like, what do we do? Right. Do we invite some guests back to the show and almost do like a hey, let's recap the last, you know, 99 episodes that brought us to 100. Right. It's going to be an bring... anniversary. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But I mean, or is that do or do we do that for our, our one year anniversary show, which is March twenty second, which is and that's fast fastly approaching as well. So then I was like, hmm, maybe I should do a big name. But we've got you know, what's pretty cool. If I don't know if you ever heard of a of a small publishing company called Top Cow. Yeah. Yep. Well, Thursday might be a Top Cow episode. This Thursday. Oh. So uh, if if all we definitely have one guy lined up a hundred percent, and if we can get the other gentleman lined up, I think it'll be quite an episode, quite an episode indeed. But uh, yeah, man, we've got so much so much coming up, and and I know you're a huge fan of comics. If there's if you see anyone in the promos that is someone you always wanted to uh, meet or talk to, you know, by all means, dude, hit me up on the cell phone. And let me know. Love to have you on as a, as a guest host. You know. Cool. And that goes, you know, for a lot of our viewers out there, you know, if you're, if we have someone on that you really are interested in, I mean, we're, we're open, you know, if you're cool and respectful and you really want to meet someone, you know, we can talk, DM me, DM me on Twitter, Facebook, wherever you follow me, follow crowdfunding comics, you know, our fans are part of our family, you know, our viewers are part of what we do. Um, Mutt man might be hitting the nail on the head on that one. Really? Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, he's the, he's the man in question. Um, the other gentleman uh, is is in, but um, yeah. So we're doing that. And actually, too, I don't know. I don't know if you were ever into in the eighties. If you got into Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles when their indie comics came out, I did. Um, but I'm working on. A, I've got two guys lined up for that out of four. So I'm going to keep working on the other two and see if I can get them locked in. And if that does happen, we're going to have one epic. TMT crowdfunding comics panel. And, and I'm looking forward to that. We'll see. We'll see what happens. And that would be pretty cool. That would be really cool. So we have that lined up. Um, yeah, man. So, uh, you know, it looks like uh, Billy had some technical difficulties. I know I just got a message from Jim. I know his phone was dying the whole time. Um, but I want to thank you Mark, <coughs> for coming on the show. Uh, you know, you're always welcome to come on the show. For those that haven't seen it yet, uh, Mark has Amazon of Venus an adult sci-fi adventure. Trust me when I tell you it's a good book. It is a good book. I have the first one. I backed it. I did this before crowdfunding comics ever became a channel. Um, you know, it was something I discovered. Then I learned, you know, after after getting the book that Mark, who was a part of it and who, and who did the crowdfunding campaign, was actually from Connecticut. So that was, uh, you know, a great coincidence. And, and we became friends uh, from there. But uh, if you like that heavy metal style, if you like that 70s, 80s indie, you know, dark lines, black and white books, great writing, action, um, you know, not afraid to be a little extreme with the dynamic uh, illustrations and nudity and stuff like that. Uh, you know, check out the book. It's good. It is good. I, yeah. I would never steer you guys wrong. <laughs> great. <laughs> unless, there, there was a, unless there was a paycheck involved. And no, and there is a tier in there where you can get Mars Invades Venus and Amazon of Venus Perfect. all in one shot. So you can get both books. Awesome. Awesome. And uh, let's see what we have here. We've got a Demonstricus Phil. Thank you, Mark. And I will be backing it tonight. Thank Fantastic. you, sir. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Awesome. So as I was getting the two, I was just kind of alluding to, you know, thanking Mark back on the show. I let him know, you know, once you're on the show, Billy, you know, you're part of the crowdfunding comics family. And, you know, I opened it up. You know, we've discussed this. You know, we, we always like, how can we integrate the fans more in the show? Well, look, if, you know, we've got a lot of good fans out there. I have names in that chat that I have seen since episode one. 
Yeah. And, you know, Thank your, you guys. your respect. If our fans are respectful, this and that, look, if you see a promo with someone that you've always wanted to say hi to, that you've always wanted to talk to, if we can make it happen, we'll do it for you. Send a DM to Twitter, to our, you know, to my Twitter account, Billy's Twitter account, Crowdfunding Comics Twitter account, which is actually the best one to go to. Um, if you don't get a response on there, hit up me or Billy. Or if you follow us on Facebook, you know, send us a message there. Um, and, you know, we'll see if we can make it happen for you guys, you know, because that's the point of this. This is to support the creators and support the fans. And if you're supporting a creator and have been supporting a creator for, for years, you know, you know, we'll take that. You know, send us a message. We'll reach out to the creator. If they're okay with having a couple of people on to do some questions, we'll send you a link. You know, yeah. respectfully, we have you on and respectfully, you know, you don't share that link. <laughs> you know, that's only for the show and for the guests. Um, but, you know, we are open to doing that. So hopefully, you know, we do get some messages and stuff. And another thing while we have it, we just confirmed uh, we've got Brian Polito back on the show uh, next Thursday because um, he has a new campaign uh, for Lady Death running. Um, that's going to be launching on the 19th, so we're going to have him on the night of the 20th. So please uh, come on by and check out Polito, and then uh, we'll get our 100th episode figured out. We have too many ideas floating around that I think now we kind of have to start you know, sifting through the cloud of ideas and pulling things and coming up together with something. So... Um, yeah, so many freaking great things, guys. So many great, great things. It's gonna be a great year, bro. You're doing a great job, Nile. It's gonna be a great year. Thank this you. This is all Thank you. you. I'm I'm just happy to be a, a small squirrel trying to get a nut. This is your world, homie. Yes, and you know, <laughs> I appreciate that because I know how much you love nuts. And uh, you know, you are a teen sensation. I am you are a teen sensation. <laughs> so I so that you told them about uh, <laughs> nuts these nuts you told me about nuts. our guests uh thursday's guest too you sort of i, I just said with... a little something about a top cow you know yeah top There's cow something about a cop top cow and we got one guy confirmed and we got another guy uh you know if he can he can if he can't you understand right you know what are you gonna do what are you gonna do what are you gonna do but right now we got the polish ninja on what what ha what happened to to, to our to our no, boy? Jim, uh, Jim had to go. His, his cell phone was it did officially die, so he shot me a message. Um, it was awesome having Jim on. I think his yeah. the book he has is good. The art's fun. He's got some great names on it. Um, you know, a lot of people that I'm really seeing up and coming in the industry. Um, Steph, I mean, his stuff is all over. His stuff is literally everywhere. Um, if it's a bad girl comic, a good girl comic, a girl on girl comic, you know, it's there. And he's got a nice style, but yeah. And uh, uh, Phil did. Phil just backed it, so you're up to 67 backers now. So you're at 1,343 dollars uh, with 16 Mike. days to go. Fantastic! Thank you. Let's, let's blow past 100. Come on and keep going. Yeah, let's get over, get them to 100. Come on, 100 backers. Why not? Why not? Thank you, man. You well done yourself. Been seeing some of those illustrations up on Twitter. As and, uh, dude, that book is coming together. You know. That book is really coming together. Can't wait to see it. And uh, one last thing I'll give out. A lot of people um, have been sending things. So today in the mail, I just received another book. Um, this is actually going to be for our guests tomorrow night. So we'll have uh, Alexia Veldhusen and uh, uh, W.S. Quinton. Um, so he's going to be on the book. So this is for 47 Furious Tales. Uh, they sent the book to me. I just received it today. He wanted me to have it before the show. Uh, again, very we, we really welcome this. Um, I actually yeah. think this is a great thing because if you have a product that you have on Kickstarter, your book is done, right? Or you have something, you know, it's really good to, you know, if you want to send us a physical copy, we can send stuff back. Or, you know, if you send it to us, that's great. We'll do it. You know, it allows us to actually really say, hey, look at the quality of this. Yeah. And, and the big thing with Quentin is uh, the quality of the book. Now, now this is smaller than your, your regular comic. Um, and, and he'll get into explaining that tomorrow night. But one thing I wanted to just show is like the quality of the book. I mean, it's, he has a thick cover. Look at that. It's kind of, it's a mat with like a cool. tiny bit of semi-gloss, right? Yeah. We've got um, Alexia did all the illustrations. She did the cover and everything. She's a Cubert alum. And look at the interiors. I mean, high gloss paper. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I mean, nice. it's a really high quality book, wow. and her illustrations are stunning. Wow. 
Frank, amazing. I am I am bringing the, the cam back. We're doing it. We're met, Mark, remember when we were doing the auction show? Yep, yep. The Deets. The, the Deets, Deets Cam. cam. <laughs> the Deets Cam. Yeah. Well, so what's the Deets Cam, you ask people? What's Why the Deets for Cam? asking that, that question, fans and friends? The Deets Cam was for detail view. That's right. Because Ooh. when we did the crowdfunding comics auction show, which you can still see our, our uh, show in syndication, unfortunately, the books are not for sale anymore but uh we had the deets cam so we had one two we had four cameras set up we had engineer matt who we would just see him doing something really weird and creepy and we'd turn his camera on and then he'd be caught like i don't know eating his boogers or whatever i have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> usually he was we call him the vapinator because this kid was sucking a vape and the cloud that came out was ridiculous we're doing the show one day and all of a sudden this cloud comes over and i'm like dude you're smoking in my house <laughs> he's like bro i'm vaping I'm like, yeah, all right, man, whatever. But anywho, so we had that, and we had two cameras, one for the, the hosts, and Mark was a guest host on the show, and we did that was one of our best shows. And then we had a camera for the main display of books, and then we had the Deets cam. So then I would take the books, and I'd bring it over to the Deets cam, and they could see, because when you've got those nice Silver Age collectible books, yeah. people want to see the spines. They want to see everything. So I was just telling Billy today, I think with since we don't use OBS anymore, because we, we don't want to deal with auto scaling and all this other stuff because you got to port things in. Um, I think I found a way by using virtual cams, I can port this stuff now into StreamYard. The hell you say? Yes. Come so on. I think because people are starting to mail things, <coughs> which I love, I love it kind of, you know, the people, the, the trust is there now. The trust is there. People trust our opinion. You know, Billy? You know, when you make it big someday, Billy, when you get <laughs> books out there people like, you'll feel what I'm feeling. All right. Can I send you books? No, nah, I don't want that trash. Oh, um, you know, <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> what do you tell? I've got that great book, my one of a kind she. She number one, man. Yeah, bro. That's fantastic. Right there in the studio. You can't see it, but it's right there. Every night I say, Good night, she. Good night, she. Good night, she. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> All right. And on that note, <laughs> right? So, everyone, we have a, um, a great show for tomorrow night. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, some amazing guests lined up. We've got Vinny Tartamella back on the show. Um, we've got Quentin and Alexia back on our uh, first time on the show. So I'll catch them on the first half of the show uh, starting at 9 o'clock. Vinny will be on about 9.35, 9.40. We'll start getting in his to a... Uh, uh, his book that's now on Indiegogo. So if you guys have, you know, please uh, check out the promos. I'll be posting those up on um, on Twitter and Facebook. And, uh, you know, we'll be back live tomorrow night at 9. Roger that. Gentlemen. Mark, thank fantastic. you so much for coming on, buddy. The best hey. of luck with the campaign. It's an awesome-looking book, buddy. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Very cool. Appreciate it. If you've got anything else coming down the pike, Mark, please keep me posted, and we'll get you back on the show, my friend. Will do. All right, everyone. You have a great night. Billy, don't work too hard. <laughs> I think I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> right? I think I'm going to go eat something. Yeah, me too. I really didn't eat. I really didn't eat yet. All right. All right, everyone. Have a great night, tomorrow. and we will see you tomorrow night at night. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Mark, thank you so much. Jim Noble, thank you too, buddy. Yes, Jim. Great, great, great stuff out there, guys. Great Back, job. share, fantastic. We will see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Boom. Peace. Hey guys, hey thanks guys, again thanks again for tuning into crowdfunding, crowdfunding comics. comics. We look forward to we hanging out with all of our crowdfunding fans.